Can American politicians such as J.D. Vance bring back American jobs from China to America? And how would that even work? J.D., why do you seem so mad? We have this arrangement for over 50 years. We're going to make everything, make some of you guys rich. And now you want to hate us for it. What's going on? We got to talk about it. Let's run the clips. We will protect the wages of American workers and stop the Chinese Communist Party from building their middle class on the backs of American citizens flooded with cheap Chinese goods, with cheap foreign labor, and in the decades to come, deadly Chinese fentanyl. Boom, Andrew, that's J.D. Vance, Trump's running mate, supposedly the next vice president of the United States of America with some strong words for China, Andrew. Obviously, I'm not saying they won yet, but it just seems like a lot of people are betting more on the Trump ticket than the Biden ticket at this point. He says, we're done sacrificing supply chains to unlimited global trade. It's time to stop the Chinese Communist Party from building their middle class on the backs of American citizens. Wow, and that really got the crowd going, guys. This is some strong language and really strong ideas. But I feel like, David, he didn't... Like, I get the whole uh, bringing jobs back to America or, or, or more Americans working and stuff like that. But... Did he really provide any specifics? No, honestly, it just sounded, to be honest, I'm not saying that he did, you know, word for word verbatim say this. It sounds like he just hates Chinese people. Right, right, right. He also did go to say, when I was in fourth grade, a career politician by the name of Joe Biden supported NAFTA, a bad trade deal that sent countless good jobs to Mexico. Which jobs those are, I don't know. Who controls the politicians? Andrew, it's pretty obvious America is increasingly every year moving towards a corporatocracy. Mm. But uh, Andrew, how come, JD, how come you didn't blame your CEO buddies who signed all the deals for the past 50 years? Uh, it takes two to tango. All right, so we're going to talk about in this video here, we have 10 reasons why we don't think that bringing back jobs, or at least the jobs that he thinks he's going to bring back, is going to work. Not that I wouldn't want it to work, but I don't think it's going to work in America. Right, it's not that America shouldn't do things to become a stronger country, but we are gonna get into our recommendations of more than likely what those things would be. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smala Sauce at smalasauce.com. Check it out on Amazon, free shipping right now. Oh yeah, by the way guys, Smala Sauce is made in America. Yeah. It's, I'm, I, we got manufacturing in America. And all, not uh, like uh, these and, other CEOs and, that have shipped it overseas. We make our product in America. And let me tell you this, it's expensive to do that. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Um, let's just take a look at some of the comments immediately. Strange that the sole superpower should have a victim mentality. It's actually quite grotesque. Uh. This is actually from an international commentator. It's true. Even though China is an up-and-coming superpower, America is the only 1A superpower in the entire world. And then they're kind of like, you took our jobs. You built your middle class meanies. And you're like, wait, what? I you sound like somebody, a Chinese person just came and took the jobs. Yeah, yeah. It was literally American CEOs being like, no, 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 I don't want to pay these uh, health benefits and all these high wages and the Chinese work a lot harder and a lot cheaper. Beep. Does anybody ever really steal someone's girlfriend, David? You know, you hear that phrase sometimes like, he stole my girlfriend. She used to be my girlfriend, but he stole her. It's like, did he steal her or did he just offer a better lifestyle and he was more appealing and she just chose the other like she chose like nobody steals anybody's girlfriend like they just have to see a more appealing opportunity right well, they just convince them yeah <laughs> yeah i mean so since when are cheap goods bad welcome to new capitalism what's wrong about a country trying to build their middle class and someone said you've got to get permission from the u.s first but here's the crazy thing andrew they did get permission right Right. Literally, the corporations control the politicians. The politicians are in bed with the corporations. The corporations wanted to outsource everything. Yeah, no, like, yeah, the China offered something and then the corporations took it. Anyways, guys, before we get into our list, here's some quick uh, thoughts. Um, you know, my opinion is I, I am an American. I'm proud of America. I want America to be stronger. I think taking care of America does make sense. But how are you going to bring back jobs from China in Mexico, and which jobs are those going to be? I'd like to hear people get specific. Are you saying, what, you want them to make the cheap sneakers or something? Or you want them to make the the, the microchips? What what level of jobs are We're we talking about? We're going to people in the great state of West Virginia putting together the Nike phone posits. <laughs> or are you like, you know what, I'm going to bring manufacturing jobs back to Oklahoma, and that's going to be the center of the semiconductor microchips. Is that what we're talking about? 
Be right, specific. right, 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 right. I'm Are you talking saying, about May working for Foxconn? Are you trying to force the Foxconn factories yeah. like back from, you know, uh, He's not blaming the right people, right? Like, Andrew, you have to blame the CEOs of American multinationals and for basically buying into glo global capitalism and selling out. Literally, Andrew, America wanted to move up this, uh, the, the, the value chain and work on design and then just have China manufacture everything. Exactly. Listen, I'm just saying China does not come... China, like, like three Chinese CEOs don't just walk up in America and are like, yeah, we like to take these jobs, so we're just going to take them. So give us your jobs and yeah. then we're going to take them back. Like, it's not like that. <laughs> yeah, it's not literally a global marketplace, guys. American CEOs were the original passport bros, but just bros for their companies. Yes, yes, yes. Um, this type of language does incite more war style feelings, Andrew, and it does actually affect how Chinese are treated in America. Yeah, so I'm not going to say that there's going to be a bunch of anti-Asian hate crimes because of this, but I already heard a story based off of the New York Post that we covered that said that the Trump shooter was originally Chinese for like the first hour. And there was this family who got harassed at a concert about saying, oh, you guys are the group that, that, that shot Trump. So it's like, you have to understand that language does affect people's lives. I'm not saying it's going to turn out into all, all like war right away, but I'm just saying it does kind of matter. So, so him not being specific and him not speaking about this topic in an intellectual kind of holistic manner, like, you know, saying which type of jobs and having specifics. Right. He's just saying, they're just saying that China stole jobs, Mexico stole jobs. And I'm like, these places didn't steal jobs. Well, he's clearly grifting in the sense that he's hyper aware of this as somebody who, you know, went to Ivy League schools. I'm sure J.D. Vance, or his real name is actually like James Donald Bowman. He just made it sound more hillbilly-like to gain the populist vote in America, sort of like George Bush Jr. had the fake Texas accent. But it's like, um, basically, like, he's just doing it to become a more popular political figure. Nobody can dial back the hands of time, Andrew. The kids have been raised, and the kids turned out how they turned out. All right, David, now let's get into the 10 reasons why we think that J.D. Vance's no plan of bringing back American jobs might not work. Yeah, I mean, point number one, Andrew, right now, a lot of people are trying to say, oh, I wish I could get a time machine and never sign those deals with China. But it's like, uh, what, are you going to dial back everything else that came from that deal? And it's almost like uh, it gets so complicated because a lot of the lower tier manufacturing jobs, Andrew, are leaving China, moving into Southeast Asia and India right now because even China is moving up the value chain. So it's like, even though uh, JD Vance's own wife is Indian and he like, you know what I mean? Like I'm saying that, India doesn't get demonized. What about the jobs from China that are moving to other countries? Right. Is he going to start putting India in that category? Right, right. And I don't think that he is because it just feels like, yeah, I mean, like I said, they're trying to specifically demonize China right now. Mm -hmm. Point number two, um, J.D. Vance is assuming that all white-looking American passport-holding people have some sort of hive mind that just simply love middle America and put America first. Mm. Like, isn't he operate the way he's talking? He's like, they're trying to build their middle class on the backs of our people who are pure and white and yeah. their people are evil, greedy and yellow. No, That's how it feels yeah. like what he's trying to say. Yeah, it's crazy to be like by China building their middle class. It takes away from our middle class. And I'm like, dude, like so a country cannot do better and not cut deals. I'm like, actually, and to be honest, it's still way better to live as an American. We all know that. The lifestyle in America is still way better. So I'm like, dude, I don't know what you're trying to say. Point number three, Andrew, it takes two sides to tango. For example, Andrew, right now, the U.S., if they really wanted to be smart, they should be focusing on upping the manufacturing capacities of South America and India. If they feel like South America and India are going to be places that have like a lot of cheap factory work available and they want to shift the reliance on, China, you know, decouple from China. Why demonize China? Why not pump up South America, stabilize it, you know, from the crime and the cartels or stabilize India's manufacturing capacities? But David, God damn it. Those goods from China sure are well made for the price, man. I don't know if South America or even India could do it right now for that price. Also, China's right across the water, right? You know, so it's easy to ship. So. I don't know, David. I hate China, but I'm going to keep working with China. No, that's really how it feels. They're like, gee, goddamn good Amazon products. I hate you. 
but I love this thing that you created. Right, right, right. Point number four, Andrew, um, America is just feeding America. I mean, China is just feeding America what America already wants. Mm. And in the speech, Andrew, he blames, he's like, China gave everybody cheap goods and now they're giving us fentanyl. And I was like, oh my God, come on. Because listen, Narcan, some of the Narcan, obviously it's from Ireland, but some of the Narcan to combat the fentanyl is also made in China. And right. guess what else is made in China, Andrew? Right, right, right. Literally every single over-the-counter drug we use Ooh. in America, 95% of aspirin is made in China. Wow. So what is he saying? I'm just saying, like, listen, everything's made over there. And fentanyl, it's really unfortunate that such a high volume of it makes it into America. But also nobody forces you to do fentanyl. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I don't know. It's crazy, man. By the way, guys, I'm fully in support of America trying to stop if they feel like Mexican cartels are hiring Chinese scientists to develop fentanyl labs in Mexico and then ship it over the border. That should stop. Let's shut it down. Point number five. Americans do not want Chinese factory jobs. Literally, we are talking about highly skilled workers working six days a week, being super locked in, no, no, no. Dave, and make, Dave, making... L a thousand dollars a month for a job, an American would want seven to eight thousand dollars a month in total compensation to work. I mean, if Americans actually did the same products that China did, wouldn't it just up the price? And then it would be so expensive. You mean I'm like not five thousand dollars for an no, iPhone? No, I, I think I think the American made goods would be good quality. I think they'd be well good, well built. I don't even know if they'd be better at. To be honest, I really don't even think that their iPhone rejection rate would be better than no, 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 let's just assume that it's just as good, if not better. The price would be like four times as much. Like, and then let's just, let's just let me just play some short clips of factories in China. Do you think Americans want to do this? She then places them separately before they move on to the next step to have them stuck together. I don't think so, man. I don't think so. No, literally people, dude. I don't know, you know, I don't want to get into JD's background. He's way more middle class than he sells. He's not as hillbilly as he sort of portrays himself. Like I said, it's like a populist American politician tactic. Point number six, Andrew. Does America still always have the moral upper hand? Like, no matter what it does, if the American CEOs of these, like, became billionaires or multi-billionaires off signing these trade deals with China, and then now do they have the moral hand to say, upper hand to be like, you stole our middle class? Mm. And no, literally. I, I mean, I just think it's so interesting. You sound like a victim. Yeah, because some people basically argue that America's like pushing of democracy has just been a patsy to basically, um, basically destabilize any region that is at conflict with its own self-interest. Other people believe that America is inherently God's chosen land and just way more moral than everybody else inherently. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And does America need to put on its own oxygen mask before helping other people? Basically saying like, is America sort of like trying to do too much and try to meddle with too many things, but it needs to focus on what it's going on internally first. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd be interested to see what happens if it's actually America first. Like what would actually, like everybody speaks of America first, America first, Americans first. Okay, let's play this out, man. What do we do? Do we up the education? Do we down the crime? Do we, do we- National like, service. Ch national service. Are we- what do we, what are we teaching kids how to uh, pick up more manufacturing jobs? Are they are, getting are, them incentivized? Hey, I, I like where you're going there, but we're going to go with the demonized China button. Right, right. I right. know what you're saying though, but we, as a group, we decided to demonize China instead. Point number seven, Andrew, even if you move TMC, TSMC from Taiwan and force everything to be completely made in the USA, all the workers are still going to be Chinese somehow or Taiwanese and maybe Indian on the software side. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So it's that's like- the brains that-, that that's, the that's who trains to do those jobs at a 10 out of 10 I mean, level. If you want to think about the amount of engineers that India and China graduate every year, it's like, it's more than the rest of the world. JD bro. Vance, if you really care, why don't you get more boba shops and some- like Lou Rofan spots in Arizona. So the TSM MC engineers actually want to immigrate fully and become Americans instead of going back to no, Taiwan. It would honestly be easier to incentivize people from China and India to leave their country's company and come to America and immigrate them, the brain workers, and then have them build it here. I think it'd be easier to do that than to bring these manufacturing jobs 
that Americans do not want. Right. Point number eight, even if you crunch China with huge tariffs and you make the goods less affordable, basically you're shutting down China's biggest market, right? So you're trying to hurt China that way. Sure. But guess what? China does a lot of business with other countries in US dollars. So the demand for the US dollar will drop globally, which is weakening sort of, you know, like basically America needs US dollars to be in demand so they can hold the power. Right, right. So right. if they hurt China, China is so interconnected in the global economy, it's still going to drop the value of the dollar. Yeah. What I think people don't understand is like you can't just take something away from China and it not affect the rest of the world, including yourself. Like it's not that it's a lot more complex. Like people don't think that the relationship with China is like, yeah, well, you know, they got some of our jobs. We're going to take them back and then we'll be good. I'm like, I like, don't know. Everything is so multi-layered and interconnected at this point. You cannot affect this domino without affecting that domino. Point number nine, Andrew. If Vance is technically, Andrew, more considered of a uh, traditional like think tank Republican more than Trump, he wants to say all these things, but at the end of the day, isn't Trump just going to do what he wants to do? Before example, Andrew, him and Vance may agree on um, like sanctions against China or tariffs against China, right? Mm -hmm. But what about Russia? If Vance goes anti-Russia and Trump loves Russia because he's homies with Putin, that's going to affect their ability to get things done even on an economic trade level because they're going to be beefing. And then point number 10, Andrew, what's done is done no matter how much you want to change your tone. Your son or your children have already been raised. You yeah. can't go back and fix history. Yeah. I mean, listen, guys, you guys let us know what you think about our 10 points of why it's going to work. I mean, why it's not going to work. And if you really think it's going to work, if you really think like, like, I get it that a lot of people emotionally, they like what that phrasing is. It's like, we're going to get our jobs back. That sounds good, right? Right. Sounds good. Right. It sounds my, good. I, and, and, you know, I'll tell you this. My kids go to local university and all them Chinese kids rolled up in Ferraris wearing Balenciaga and YSL. And my kid doesn't have those things. Mm -hmm. That was off my back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, like, dude, it really, I've never, I haven't seen any of the jobs come back. People have been talking about taking jobs back for 15 years, man. I so you want seen, to move down the value chain? I haven't seen anybody bring back any jobs in 15 years, and I don't know what jobs he's talking about. Um, Wouldn't it make sense to make Americans smarter so they could more hold that top tier of the global value chain? Yeah. yeah and, no. Encourage more of them to go abroad, yeah. and then because you know how American workers abroad still get American tax. Yeah, I, get thought, by the I thought a good system was like America innovates and then tells the rest of the world to make the innovations for an unaffordable price. I thought that was a good deal. I thought it made sense. Um, but yeah, apparently, obviously, uh, you do need more jobs in America, but shipping them back from China and stealing them back from China is not going to work. So what I think is it really comes down to self-responsibility and accountability. And a lot of people don't want to have accountability. And it's funny because there's certain things on the right side and like the Republicans that I do agree with. And their message, their general message of like self-responsibility and pull yourself up from the bootstraps is very like consider Republican right now, right? Right. But it's funny because they're not applying that to this situation. There's no self-responsibility when J.D. Vance is talking about jobs leaving America or that Americans don't want to work these jobs. I'm like, you. it just comes down to like, what can you teach your kid to want to do? Because like, listen, if your kid does not want to work a manufacturing job, if you cannot raise Americans to want to do these things, the jobs will not come back. So the responsibility is on America. Right. And, and, uh, and you know, they're, I'm saying the Republicans are always talking about self-accountability for everybody else. And I'm like, yeah, well, this is where Americans got to have self-responsibility. Yeah, literally, this is where they have to study STEM more, do math more, or at least up the math in the STEM levels of South America and India where you're planning to decouple and move everything right. from China. Or if that's your actual like 12 year plan. Let's just say JD Vance wins and he's four years as VP. And let's just say by some crazy stroke of luck, he wins another eight as president. He will have 12 years to implement this plan. Yeah. But guess what? Other people will have to do their part. Yeah. And I'm saying, dude, like if you don't, if you want to boycott Chinese made goods, if people want to do that in America, do it. See if you can actually do it. Like I, that would, that would honestly speak volumes if you actually stop buying everything anything that's made in china just to prove your point and be like you know what i want these jobs to come back to america i'm willing to pay more for these goods to be made in america then 
then do what you say you would do. Hey, man. We're just asking for some realistic coaching here. Yeah. I'm just saying to blame China for stealing jobs is just like blaming somebody for stealing your girlfriend. I'm like, dude, no one steals girlfriends. They just convince them otherwise. That's it. Yeah. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think of this whole thing in the comment section below. It's probably going to be a theme for the next decade or two in America. Until next time, we're the Hop Hop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.